Okay, continuing on. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to make the video so long, guys. It's just when he shows me stuff and he says go, it, every, every turn I make, there's just more and more and more connections. And so I'm trying to show you everything to give you the full view of how everything that I keep seeing. And, and there's stuff that I've written in my notes that I probably won't even put in the video because that's how much stuff there is. So I'm trying to stay on track. So let me just keep going. Um, so we're going through the calendar here. And as I said, I don't know for sure if, you know, if the bride's going to be transformed on these, this time frame or not. I don't know. This is just what scripture shows and what he has shown me over the past several years of things that he's led me to, like the movie 222 and, and showing me the number 223 and how the enemy flips everything backwards. So, you know, I'm just putting it all together, everything that I've been shown and other people have been shown and things that the enemy shows us themselves. So whether or not they fall on these days, I don't know. Okay. Um, and I just have dead in Christ rise because of the first fruits. Uh, so moving on with the calendar, um, Nisan 21 is the seventh day of unleavened bread. This is a day of a solemn assembly. And, uh, the first day of unleavened bread and the last day or the seventh day are the Sabbaths, which means they're set apart and you are supposed to observe them as far as, you know, and perhaps he, for us who are believers now, our observation is just to watch them and to learn about their meanings. Um, doesn't mean if you don't actually, you know, keep the, the day in and observe it the way the Jews do. Um, I don't think he's holding us to that. He wants us to observe them and pay attention to their meanings and, and what they point to in scripture. So when I saw that the seventh day of unleavened bread, which is like I said, a Sabbath and it's a solemn assembly and solemn means it's like serious, take it seriously. When I saw that it landed on March 27th and I saw the numbers three, two, seven, I was immediately reminded of a video that I put in one of my videos, a video clip from a movie that I put in one of my past videos where that number is prominently displayed. And I'm going to show you that clip here. Okay, so this is from the James Bond movie Spectre, which came out in 2017. This is James Bond here in this uh, skeleton costume with this woman, and they are going to go into this hotel and go up to her room. But I want to show them in the elevator before they get up to the room. Okay, so in this part of the clip, they are rising up, going up in the elevator, and they represent the dead. Um, this holiday is uh, based on the Mexican holiday Dia de los Muertos, which means Day of the Dead, but it's celebrated in many different countries, um, just on different days. And they are going to her hotel room, and when I have the clip on its own at the 223 mark is when you see this. Boom. So as you see here, I took a screenshot of it. Right at 223, they show prominently there's a reason why they're both standing to the side so you can see the numbers. They don't show numbers in movies for no reason. Are they trying to signal that this is the day when the dead are going to be loosed from the pit. If the AC has been wormwood, the spirit of wormwood, the dragon, the serpent has been cast down, he's the one that's going to get the key to open the bottomless pit. And 
and I'm just picturing in my mind uh, let me go back to the calendar I mean I'm just picturing in my mind you know there's a solemn assembly it's a holy Sabbath unto the Lord is this the day that the pit will be opened while the bride is perhaps been translated or hidden somewhere and there is a solemn or serious assembly because the pit has been opened I don't know I, I, I don't know just showing you what I see um, and then it keeps on going now I have here bright hidden I don't know if you know if that would be the case the reason I have that in there is because um, sister Barbara from God's Healer 7 this this is the day that she has proclaiming the coming of the kingdom and she had asked what this date meant and she was told that she would be teaching well, that's what the 144,000 will be doing. They will be teaching and spreading the gospel. So, um, could this be letting us know that the translation happens before that? And if the translation has happened, then um, either we're somewhere else and we come back and are hidden here. And the reason I say hidden is because this is when the moon is dark. And this actually ties to, I mean, this is a new moon, but it's not the first sliver. This is the actual complete dark phase. And this ties back to Psalm 81.3. And I will show you what I mean by that. So as I stated in the first video and in previous videos in the past, that this time appointed is a full moon which has to happen on a festival day um, when you click on where it says in, in the time appointed and go to the Strong's it says it's full moon but then when you go down it's um, it says apparently it is from the root word of Kasa and um, does it say it up here? No. So let me click on this word. If it's from this word, and this may have been where people got confused. I don't know for sure about the moon. I'm sorry, the month beginning with a full moon. Because if it's from the word, if kese, which means full moon, comes from this root word, kasa, it means to cover. And all the places over here um, uh, conceal, um, hide, take refuge, and it has to do with hiding and covering. And um, so I immediately thought of hiding under his wings. And Psalm ninety-one four talks about um, him being our refuge and our fortress he shall cover you with his feathers under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness is a shield and a rampart and all the places um, these are all the places where it's talked about him covering and even in Ruth um, uh, may the Lord repay your work and may you receive a rich reward from the Lord the God of Israel, under whose wings you have taken refuge. This is Naomi speaking to Ruth. And I, I think she might have been speaking to Orpah at the same time. And, um, you know, hide me in the shadow of your wings. So it's talking about him covering us and hiding us, which um, is po the, the root word, possibly. It says, apparently of a full moon so what I'm getting at is is he trying to say that once the full moon happens we will be hidden during this time I don't know 
I don't know. Um, and then it's interesting that April 6th, which is the date of Sister Barbara, her prophecy, um, lands on the the first day of the second month. And on the first day of every new month, you're supposed to blow the trumpet. Blow the shofar. And here's an interesting thing, which I didn't even know until this evening while I'm doing these videos, that the original, the Hebrew name for the second month on the Hebrew calendar, which the Jews call Er now, which is a Babylonian name, that the original name was Zeev. And let me show you what Zeev means. So as you see here, it's the second month on the Jewish calendar. And I just am amazed at the things that I see when I go just searching these things. Of course, I'm Holy Spirit led, I believe. So it's the second month, but look at the meanings. Brightness, freshness, month of brightness of flowers. Uh, from, in, in a sense, be bright, splendid, increase, thrive of seed produce. This is go, going back to a, a, a beautiful and bright or fresh plant. This goes back to green, which he kept showing me over and over. Um, glory, be magnificent. Um, properly brightness, the month of flowers. And that ties also back to King, um, Song of Solomon, where he describes his bride and all the different flowers. Um, are mentioned uh, and it being springtime so um, apparently it's only mentioned in two verses and they're both in first Kings chapter 6 so we're gonna look at that so it was only in verses 1 and verse 37 and it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month Zeev, which is the second month that he began to build the house of Yahweh, house of the Lord. So this is when the first temple was built. It was in this month. So just saying, let's go down to verse 37. Of course, we know that we are the living stones of the temple. Verse 37, in the fourth year was the foundation of the house of Yahweh laid in the month Zeev. The foundation. <laughs> I mean, I'm just now reading this for the first time, guys. So, um, yeah. So, backing up a little bit here. Um, March 31st from 219, which was uh, Purim on Torah calendar the day that we all got excited about because it was the super blood moon and it was the first day of Purim 40 days from that day land you on March 31st and 40 days we know is a, is a time of completion um, 40 days of fasting in the wilderness for our Messiah 40 days I'm sorry 40 years of wandering in the wilderness so after 40 there's a, a stop so this is the 40th day and then look what happens the very next day and this day guys is oh my goodness I did a video last year pertaining to this time because Passover fell on this day last year April 1st so I was looking into it and the stuff I found was like oh my gosh and I tried finding it again I think I have it somewhere in some of my files, pictures, but they may have been put on a flash drive because I'm not sure where they're at and it would take a long time for me to find them. And I tried finding the same information online and I can't find it. So I don't know if it's been removed or it's just hidden somewhere. I don't know. But let's, just let me tell you that April 1st is an abomination. It is a mockery of our Savior's sacrifice on Passover and I think it's it's there's people have festivals where they dress up and they they have an effigy of 
of a character that they take through a parade and he has grave clothes on. He has the, um, the part of the shroud that goes over the head that covers the when uh, the Hebrews would bury a body they would wrap the body in the fine linen and, and then cover their head with a, a head cloth and they have this effigy that is clearly depicting Christ and they're making a mockery of it which is one of the reason why they call it April Fool's Day and which is why I was looking into it because it fell on April 1st last year but let me show you something else Okay, so um, April Fool's Day is also called All Fool's Day. Uh, hang on. Okay, so um, it's been celebrated for several centuries by different cultures. Its exact origins remain a mystery. However, some historians speculate that April Fool's Day dates back to 1582, when France switched from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar as called for, the Ber for by the Council of Trent in 1563. So this is the year that the Gregorian calendar went into existence from the Julian and they jumped ahead 10 days. I've covered that several many times in other videos. Um, so they go on to say that uh, people who were slow to get the news about the year changing from the last week of March to January 1st were made the butt of jokes and hoaxes so they were called fools here's another interesting tie a blasphemous tie these pranks including having a paper fish placed on their backs and being referred to as a poisson d'avril um, d'avril uh, april fish said to symbolize a young easily caught fish and a gullible person um, historians have also linked April Fool's Day to festivals such as Hilaria, which was celebrated in ancient Rome at the end of March and involved people dressing up in disguises. Uh, I'm going to show you something about Hilaria in just a second. Um, there's also speculation that April Fool's Day was tied to the vernal equinox or the first day of spring, which is um, where we started this whole uh, watch period on the 21st. March 21st. Um, it spread throughout Britain and um, here's another thing. Uh, there were pranks where people would pin fake tails or kick me signs on them which is where we get the pin the tail on the donkey because they being an ass you know we call someone who's acting like a fool you know they're acting like an ass so this is where we got the pin the tail on the donkey thing um and it probably has something to do with yeshua riding in on a donkey through uh, jerusalem on his triumphal entry which was on nissan 10 which i covered in the first video about the day that the lamb was chosen aka the bride so in modern times um, they do hoaxes and um, it's also tied to the um, they also when they dress up in disguises they'll dress up like sometimes like the jester or the joker because the joker the jester is known as a fool and <laughs> back in 2015 I believe it was I had a vision where I saw a Joker card, but it was black and white. There was no red. It was just black and white. And it was clearly the the uh, the jester symbol. And I didn't even know until I looked it up because I'm not a card player <laughs> that the Joker is also called the Trump card. So, and that was before he was elected. So, I mean, all this stuff is just tying in together, and it just blows me away. So I'm sorry to make the video so long guys, but there's just so much stuff and I'm just trying to show you as much as I can without putting up 10 videos all based on the same thing. Um, so if you have to pause in the middle and then continue watching it later, then so be it. But you need to see all this information. So here's Hilaria, which is another, uh, this is where April Fool's Day can uh, be originated from. And 
um, <laughs> he had me study all this pagan stuff so I would know what's going on. So the Romans celebrated Hilaria as a feria stativa on March 25th, the eighth day before the calendar of April in honor of Sybil, the mother of the gods. Just another name for you know who. And it is probably to distinguish these Hilaria from those mentioned above that the Augustan history calls them Hilaria Matistum. Okay. Um, the day of its celebration was the first after the equal vernal equinox which is 322 going back to everything I pointed to in the first video um, March 22nd that's the first day after the vernal equinox so the day of its celebration used to be then uh, or the first day of the year which was longer than the night the um, talking about winter being over and Let's see, where was the part I wanted to show? Okay, well, um, down here just gives a different date. So we know that this is the Ides of March. And the, the names of these things is just, are you kidding me? So this all has to do with Hilaria, this festival. The full festival can be tentatively reconstructed with the days of the festival literally translated as follows. March 15th, the reed entered. Um... I mean, are you kidding? The reed entered? Yeshua is sometimes referred to as a reed in in the Bible. Um, and <laughs> this is the day before Nisan 10. And according to how the calendars could be messed up, this, it could be the day. The reed entered? It's not talking about our reed. It's talking about the anti-reed. Its exact significance is uncertain. The reads may refer to the riverbank where Attis, this is another, this is an Antichrist figure. This is like, um, uh, what was Nimrod's? Tammuz. This is just another name. They're all, it's all one and the same. Same entity. This is the dragon. This is his son. Um, was rescued by, uh, uh, March 22nd. This is the 322. The tree entered. Which tree? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That tree. <laughs> Which is why they, you know, have this day all over the place. March 23rd, day of mourning. 24th, day of blood. Um... Of course, these dates are all in the, from the 22nd here down to the 27th. This is all the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we have a day of rest, a day of washing. I mean, it, it's unbelievable how all this stuff is connected. And then there's this. So this woman is sitting here with a dunce cap on or a fool's cap for April 1st. What does that remind you of? So, here we go. Got the dunce cap on. And I'm sure somebody else has noticed, uh, especially the guys who have done the complete breakdowns of this video. But I did not notice until I f f screenshot this that he has six fingers on this hand, on his left hand. And who does he turn into once he spins around? The one that graduates. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to wrap this one up for now. Um, but I do want to show some other scriptural stuff because I've got tons of notes, but I'll do that in the next video. But um, the Shavuot, which is Pentecost, lands on May 11th. And that is three days before... Israel's 71st birthday of being a nation. So this is within the time frame. Shavuot is the wheat harvest. Could this be when the second group goes? I don't know. 
um, but as you see it falls before May 14th three days before um, so I just wanted to point all these things out according to these dates but like I said there's some more things that back up some of this stuff uh, regarding Ruth the book of Ruth and uh, just bunches of other scriptures so I'll, I'll cover those in the next video because I think it will encourage you to see how everything is tying together so I'm going to cut this off here guys and I pray this has blessed you sorry it was so long hopefully though it kept your interest and went by quick because this is some important stuff um, can't say for sure if anything's going to happen but I will finish up with the scripture references tomorrow It'll be in the afternoon. I've got to go do some work in the morning. But, um, yeah. So for now, I'll sign off. And I pray that you come back and watch the scripture references. Because that will truly bless you. This was all the bad stuff that I'm showing. But um, there's some good stuff too. So um, I'm going to end this part with the blessing. Um, before I say the blessing though, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Yahuwah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Blessed are you, Lord God, Yahuwah, King of the Universe. Hallelujah. Alright, guys. Hopefully I'll see you in part four. Shalom. I love you all.